Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So, because I've deleted so many playlists, I'm, I'm going to start doing what I'm naturally good at, which is other texts and philosophy, which I'm trained in. So we're going to read this book that I've already read, but it's been a long time since I've gone at it again, and I didn't annotate this one as much. Uh, Thus spoke Zarathustra, Frederick Nietzsche. All right, so let's begin. Z Zarathustra's Prologue 1. When Zarathustra was 30 years old, he left his home and the lake of his home and went into the mountains. Here he enjoyed his spirit and his solitude and for 10 years did not tire of it. But at last a change came over his heart and one morning he rose with the dawn, stepped before the sun and spoke to it thus. So he's going in front of the sun and he's been in the mountains for 10 years. Enjoyed his solitude, so let's see. You great star, what would your happiness be had you not those for whom you shine? Well, you, look, look at that for a second. So that implies, right? Can you be happy if there's no one there to witness the glory? Does emanating the glory add to the receiver and the one who transmits, right? For ten years you have climbed to my cave, and you have tired... Oh, I see. So for ten years you have climbed to my cave, you would have tired of your light, and of the journey, had it not been for me and my eagle and my serpent. Okay, so we have the eagle, himself, and the serpent. So, you see how the eagles of the air, the serpents of the ground, and the man is like, can go in between in a certain way. But we waited for you every morning, took your overflow from you, and blessed you for it. Behold, I am weary of my wisdom, like a bee that has gathered too much honey. I need hands outstretched to receive it. I am weary of my wisdom, like a bee who has gathered too much honey. Now this is interesting because too much honey, how does a bee become weary? Isn't it crystallized? Because... Uh, Honey doesn't grow mold, and wisdom doesn't grow old in the terms of not having relevance, right? I would give away and distribute until the wise among men find joy once again in their folly, and the poor in their riches. So the men find joy once again in their folly, and the poor in their riches. So the rich finding joy in folly, and the poor finding happiness in their riches. For that I must descend to the depths, as you do in the evening, when you go behind the sea, and still bring light to the underworld, you over-rich star. <laughs> oh, he's just calling the sun over-rich. That's, that's rich, right? And then bringing light to the underworld. So wherever it goes, it sheds its light. <laughs> like you, I must go under go down as is said by man to whom I want to descend. So bless me then, you quiet eyed that can look even upon an all too great happiness without envy. So here, it's strange, right? He's talking to a star, but saying that something as bright that gives so much richness and is overflowing with richness gets to look upon happiness without envying it. So it's almost satiated with what it has. It's not like an undying hunger of acquisition. Bless the cup that wants to overflow, that the water may flow from it golden and carry everywhere the reflection of your delight. Behold, this cup wants to become empty again, and Zarathustra wants to become man again. Look, so here you see this dynamicism of becoming empty again, he's overflowing with wisdom, feels like a bee that's burdened, you know, with too much honey, and he wants to find joy and again. So he's worn down by his richness and solitude and his life upon the mountains, and now he wants to descend again, meaning go back to somewhere else where there's not going to be this lofty peak. Right? He's got to go literally down from the mountain 
descend like how the sun was going down and <laughs> go on let's see the Zarathustra began to go under two Zarathustra descended alone from the mountains encountering no one but when he came into the forest all at once there stood before him an old man who had left his holy cottage to look for roots in the woods I like that you can get the total dynamic here first we have the scenes of the mountain now we have a cute little college I mean a cottage in the woods and it's a holy cottage so it's wholesome you know there's some type it's not like a creepy scary there's probably a witch in there right it's something that when you stumble upon it as you're wondering there's a sort of glow to it a sort of you know contentment with it and thus spoke the old man to Zarathustra no stranger to me is this wanderer many years ago he passed this way Zarathustra he was cold but he has changed at that time you carried your ashes to the mountains would you now carry your fire into the valleys look at that so almost like a phoenix in a way he's getting here came with ashes left with fire right very interesting so went into the mountains went high and now is going low into the valleys you see here do not fear to be punished as an arsonist you see lighting too much fires giving too much wisdom the sun contains fire here he's talking about fire the sun gives light fire gives light and starts things but also destroys right destroys illusions just like the sun destroys shadows right it, it clears away the darkness it's interesting right yes i recognize zarathustra his eyes are pure and around his mouth there hides no disgust does he not walk like a dancer so here you can see the gracefulness he's talking about zarathustra has changed zarathustra has become a child zarathustra is awakened one so notice this like a child so the creativity, the wonder at the world. Remember, he said, I want to have folly and I want to be free, right? Awakened. A lot of this awakened analogy is a lot to do with the sun symbolism. What do you know want with the sleepers? Oh, I see. It's like, what do you want now to do with among the sleepers? So there's this play of words here. The awakened one wanting to awake the sleepers, right? You lived in your solitude as in the sea, and the sea carried you. Alas, would you now climb ashore? Alas, would you again drag your own body? Ha <laughs> ha. So the sea, it's like carried you. You're going with the, you know, going with the flow. You're kind of bouncing around. You maybe don't have as much specific purpose, right? But now to climb ashore is like now you have a destination instead of being carried about, you know? Zarathustra answered, I love the man. Why? asked the saint. Did I go into the forest and the desert? Was it not because I love man all too much? Now I love God. Man I love not. Man is for me too imperfect a thing. Love a man would kill me. Zarathustra answered, Did I speak of love? I bring men a gift. Give them nothing, said the saint. <laughs> the saint here. So this is interesting because he's like, uh, I don't like humans, you know. God is, you know, better to love God than humans. Uh, loving humans would kill you because they constantly disappoint, right? They're constantly letting us down. <laughs> Rather, take part of their load and help them to bear it. That's a good point. So don't give. Help them bear their burdens. Very interesting, right? That will be best for them. If only it does you good. Aha! If only it does you good. And if you want to give them something, give no more than alms and let them beg for that. This is a very interesting example. So the saying is saying like, make them beg for it. Like, please, please, and you give it. Or at least hold their hands out. And alms is like, you know, you got some... You got some coins, right? It's like it's not like a big old treasure chest, you know, of like, here you go. No, answered Zarathustra. I give no alms, for that I am not poor enough. The saint laughed at Zarathustra and spoke thus. 
then see it to it that they accept your treasures. They're suspicious of hermits. This is really true because I don't like people who study a lot, people who learn a lot. We are kind of like hermits and people are constantly, you know, being suspicious. Oh, you're doing it for this, you're doing it for that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it is very true that there is a lot of hatred, suspicions, and malicious, envious, you know, gazes that always look at hermits in a weird way or suspicious or something dark and mischievous just because they enjoy learning instead of spending time, you know, sitting by the park and, you know, talking about whatever some politician did or something, you name it, whatever the topic is going to be, right? Or they're not with the women gossiping or something like that. It's really interesting. So the saint telling Zarathustra, who's been a hermit in the mountains, who's filled with wisdom, who says he now wants to go and give uh, help to humans, is, uh, <laughs> you know, he's getting some wisdom here. Like, hey, be careful, you know, be careful. And notice here when he said, I'm not poor enough to give alms. So... Money, some would argue, is the cheapest form of help, whereas wisdom is more rich. You see the play here? Because he's the enlightened one, you know? Very interesting. And do not believe that we come with gifts. See, like, yeah, he's like, there's the gift of wisdom. Whereas they may think that you're spreading malice or dirtiness or something bad, right? Because you're bringing very focused energy on specific topics. Our steps sound too lonely through the streets. And what if at night, in their beds, they hear a man walk by long before the sun has risen? They probably ask themselves, where is this thief going? So here, notice, before the sun has risen. So there's a double play here. So remember how he went in front of the sun? And, it, you know, it's like the sun gives away and distributes. It enlightens. He's enlightened. And... Some people have not become enlightened and they have not been awakened. They're kind of the walking dead. And the people who have enlightenment are on a different path. And those who are not are like, hey, what are they doing? So here when he says, you know, the early bird kind of catches the worm in a both playful sense and literal sense, someone who has comfortability and steadfastness and self-assurance in their wisdom walks with a different meter and someone who is more sloth-like has different goals or just is not worried about them, anything concerning the mind and consciousness is going to be alerted by the footsteps and the actions and behaviors and destination and whereabouts of those who do. This is something very common throughout history. Do not go to man. Stay in the forest. Go rather even to the animals. Why do you not... <laughs> Why do you not want to be as I am and bear among bears, a bird among birds? So look at this. This is interesting because even I myself want to be like, hey, you know, rather just go to the forest and deal with some of the nonsense uh, that's coming upon our society. Because it does show patterns where seekers of knowledge, students of knowledge are always henpecked. They're always having their their motives questions, their intentions doubted, and being harassed. And so he's saying it's better to be with the animals because at least the animals, they have this sort of docile uh, behavior and you can study them and you can help them and they'll actually probably appreciate it more than a human. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. It's like go to the mountains with your sheep. And then he says here, you know, a bird among birds. So the flight of mind and then the bear is also protection as well you're alive and you can endure and you can protect and you have hibernation habits that allow you to endure as a hermit through weather changes and long periods of time without the nuisance of other humans deflecting you from your your studies so here this dialogue between the saint and Zarathustra is is just so amazing. I mean, such a great book. So I hope you enjoy, friend.